Today on Muddy Beers 4x4, we're talking bump stops and limit straps. Hello everyone and welcome to Muddy Beards 4x4. I am Robbie and I am back out here in the shop working on the one ton swap on the trail plug, my 1999 Jeep Cherokee XJ. And there is progress being made on this build. In fact, Kelly was over here last weekend. He got the gear set up in the rear Sterling axle here. So it's now got 538s and a grizzly locker in it. And we got about halfway through that uh, front 60. But in the meantime, I need to finish up one of the last little important projects to wrap up this four link build. And that is setting up the bump stops and limit straps. Now a bump stop is really any kind of device that prevents or stops the up travel of your suspension or otherwise known as bump. And there's many reasons why you might, might want to do this for performance or stability purposes, but probably the main reasons why is for clearance issues, whether it's tire up into the body or it's going to contact some other kind of suspension component, or as in my case, you're trying to prevent damage on your really expensive uh, shocks here. So with a rear four link system like this, it makes sense to do something that's going to be frame mounted. And really that can be anything like this is it just a traditional rubber like wedge style mount. In fact, this is the factory one that was here for the, the leaf spring setup that would just mount like this and is designed to make contact with the axle tube. In fact, that's originally what my plan was. This I believe is from Daystar and it's essentially the same thing. It's a rubber bump stop, but this one's kind of cool because it's taller, which is what I needed for this application, but also has these slots in it, which is supposed to provide like an extra bit of like progressive dampening, um, just to give it a little bit of a softer ride when you hit the bump stop. And this is super simple and cheap to set up. And for you know a build like this, that's kind of the theme. And so I was definitely gonna go with that, but, I ended up sourcing me some of these. Now these are a well-loved, <laughs> they are used, but they're still in perfect working condition, Bilstein um, can style air bump stop. Now obviously these are sort of, you know, the, the best version of bump stops for these, um, for this kind of setup. Um, you know, they're adjustable, they got progressive dampening, and they're definitely the most comfortable for your ride. And to mount it, we're simply gonna be using just this simple can style bracket. Um, the can slips in there and you can tighten it up. These are from Poly Performance. Um, uh, I got it from AccuTune.com. And then on the axle side, um, this bump stop is going to contact what's called this axle pad mount. Um, I got this from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. It's simple, it's cheap, um, and it's going to be very easy to set up. So let's get to it. Well, all right, everyone, check it out. I got everything tacked into place and these bump stops just set up here. And I should probably explain what I got going on here. So I set up this with the axle at full bump, meaning this is the maximum amount of up travel I want to have in my suspension. Now I did that for two reasons. One is these upper control arm mounts. So those are about to contact the floor pan um, but also is the shock. Now these are a Fox 14 inch coilover shock 
and it is recommended that you never fully compress these shocks to avoid any kind of damage like blowing seals out and stuff. So what you want is, is about an inch of shaft showing at full bump. So I set these up here for this to be at the maximum up travel. Um, here's my axle pad mount here just tacked into place and then I just centered this can mount and I made sure that I used my angle finder to make sure everything was nice and perpendicular and I ran the bump can here up almost to full compression. So that may take a little bit of adjustment with the, you know, the, the gas pressure inside of the can, but you can also um, adjust this a little bit inside of the bracket. So that's pretty nice. So really all I need to do now is, is just burn this in all the way. And I'd be pretty confident by just laying a big fat bead right here. This is a frame stiffener. Um, and you know, I could probably get a nice weld on it, but just to make sure that this is going to be nice and safe, I made this with the help of some cardboard aided design. It's pretty simple little bracket. I used a hole saw to cut this out to have follow the contour of that can mount. And this is gonna mount like this. And it's just gonna add a little bit of extra gusseting so that I know that this thing is gonna be nice and secure and then it's not gonna come apart on me. So I'm gonna get this thing welded into place and we should be able to get started on, whoops, we should be able to get started on the limit straps. All right, well now moving on to the limit straps, what you're gonna wanna do is drop your axle down to full droop. But just like with the bump stops, we do not want our shock to be the limiting factor here. So what I did is I just took the jack up, I measured my shaft here, and I just bumped it up about a half an inch. That way I know this thing is gonna be limited before the shock um, bottoms out. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is for these is I just have these very simple mounting tabs. They're just a double shear tab that I got from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. It's made for like seat belts, but can also be used for uh, these limit straps. And it's got two of them. And I think what I'm gonna do is just very simply mount this somewhere up here on the frame, up, up against the frame stiffener. So I have a nice thick piece to weld to. And then just one side down here at the axle, which this looks like it should line up perfectly with my bump stop pad. Again, giving me a good place to weld everything up. And the most important thing is, is that it's perfectly perpendicular. You want your limit strap to be nice and straight. And so then all I did was, is I just took tape measure and I just measured eye hole to eye hole. And what I ended up getting eye hole to eye hole with it set up like this was about 15 and a quarter inches. And so that doesn't mean that you order a 15 inch strap. Um, in fact, this is a 14 inch strap. Now, most people say that these will stretch about one inch, but it really depends upon the length. Now, TMR Customs actually has a chart on their website. And for the 14 inch strap, they said that it would stretch to 15 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. Well, I needed 15 and a quarter, but that sounds about as close as I'm going to get. So I went ahead and got the 14s. So I think what I'm gonna do here is just kind of get everything mocked into place, set her up and weld it in, that simple. And just like that, I now have completed bump stops and limit straps on this rear four link setup.
that should just about wrap up this video honestly a pretty easy tech video today but i am happy with the way that turned out it looks awesome and what's even better is i think that is really the last major step that i need to figure out before i get to pull that axle out of there i gotta do a little bit of finish welding and stuff but then i can paint it and get the thing back together for final assembly so i can get at least the rear of the jeep on its own weight on wheels and tires and that is some real progress now i do still need to figure out the wheel well situation here so i did a video a long time ago where i rebuilt uh the wheel well here on the jeep i actually extended it out about four inches um, but i cut out a lot more this time so um i gotta figure out how i want to do that and make that look good so if you want me to make a video on that um, maybe I can film that as well, but um, things are getting done. There's a lot of progress being made here. So if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Go check out our website from the links in the description of this video. And until next time, we'll see you on the trail.